Welcome to Dutchman Seb. I'm Sebastian Tulin, motoring journalist and mechanical engineer. We're here today with a lovely 2017 Fiat Panda. Not just any old Panda. This is a rugged urban jungle warrior, the Fiat Panda Cross with 4x4. It's got a permanent four-wheel drive option, um, driving most of the time in a two-wheel drive. But you've got a selector that can tell you whether you go automatic in four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, uh, depending on your terrain. Um, this over here has got a locking rear differential, or uh, electronically controlled, as well as a locking center differential. So it can get a little bit of fun and sporty on the off-road, especially if you're a weekend warrior, like to go away with some friends, pack a, a mountain bike on the back. We've got lovely storage on the roof racks here to make sure that you've got just enough space to get all your off-road gear and just take you anywhere. It's a lovely little two-cylinder engine. Yes, a two-cylinder engine. The same one that can be found in the Fiat 500. It's bigger brother. This little uh, crossover SUV gives you a little bit of a nice ride height here, similar to those of your Suzuki Jimny. Uh, you've got Beautiful fuel economy here of a claim figures of 4.2 liters per hundred. It's packing a 0 0.9 cylinder, uh, 0 0.9 liter engine, uh, which is about 900 cc. Uh, in a two cylinder engine, as I explained earlier, uh, in an inline formation, and that's giving you 63 kilowatts thanks to the uh, twin air turbo petrol engine and 145 newton meters of torque. That's quite a lot of power from a two cylinder engine at less than a one liter capacity. So let's have a look and see how she drives on the off-road. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Here you can see on the Fiat Panda Cross, we get 161 millimeters ground clearance. That's up from 150 millimeters in the Fiat 4x4 Panda. And you've also got beautiful edge trim here around the wheel arches, with flare wheel arches giving you nice off-road protection, as well as plastic trims here around the bumpers uh, on the side sills, giving you that extra protection. You've also got lovely protection in the front, as well as at the back on the bumpers, to make sure that your car's not going to get scratched when you're heading off-road. What a fantastic 15-inch set of wheels. These come standard on the Fiat Panda Cross. Beautiful standard, lovely 15 inches. 225 liters in the boot. Not a lot, but enough just enough 810 liters however when the back seats go down so that's done quite easily at the back here at the flip of the button boom those go flat as well when the seats when the bags are not in the back seat giving you 810 liters in the back uh, let's have a look at the legroom in the back here in the back you can see the legroom is quite comfortable the headroom is very, very uh, generous, actually. This is my driving position, and my driving seat is quite far back. It's cramped, to be honest. driving inside the Fiat Panda Cross, the road noise is a little bit audible, as well as the two-cylinder engine. It does sound very um, classic of your three-cylinder engine, um, but it's, I'd say, bearable. It's not really too noisy, but it's not exactly quiet. Uh, it's not as smooth as your four-cylinder engines that you get around. Uh, the ride quality in here is great. The build quality is fantastic. The material finishes are really, really superb. You're getting a very good uh, interior cabin here. Very smart, very modern, as well as all your com creature comforts and your features. You've got automatic climate control on this cross model. We've got um, all your Bluetooth radio connectivity. You've got smart city uh, start-stop technology. Um, we've got a shift indicator, you've got your, all your trip meters on your computer with a digital dash. Um, analog gauges though for your rev counter and your odometers, as well as your um, tachometer. Nice controls here on the steering wheel for your Bluetooth audio and your radio controls, and especially for your um, hands-free for your phone connectivity. Um, no color LCD touchscreen though, um, it's all analog dials on the radio uh, with a nice uh, black and white uh, display. The storage space in the car isn't generous, I might add. The cubby hole is too small. Um, the storage space on top of the cubby hole is huge, but it doesn't have a cover, so it's not very safe to leave things there in the car that's visible. Um, the sound in here is pretty good. Your music is really nice and clear, nice speakers around the car. Your um, hands-free audio for your Bluetooth phone is really clear and audible. It gives you a nice quality sound when you're on a phone call. Um, the road 
road noises, as I mentioned earlier, are a little bit noisy with a lot of wind sound coming off of the B pillars, but nothing that you notice at low speeds around the city. Only, it only really picks up on the highway. Um, average cruising around, you've got a six speed manual gearbox on the cross uh, with a five speed manual gearbox in the easy, the lounge, and the 4x4 variants. The cross giving you the nice six speed automatic gearbox. Um, you've got very, very nice ride height, uh, making you feel very elevated on the road. Um, as you can hear, quite a lot of wind noise again. Uh, it does get especially windy in Cape Town. Um, you've got very nice um, hands-free uh, kit on the dashboard here, which is where I'm actually filming from with the camera mounted on the dash, with a nice USB charging port there for your cell phone, which is quite handy and convenient, especially since you don't have built-in nav in your radio, you can use the Google Maps on your phone. Quite handy. Fuel economy in here, we're getting around 5 litres per 100 at the moment now, which is not bad for a small little car, especially since this thing bursts for fuel economy in the two cylinder engine with the 1 litre capacity. Well, just under a 1 litre actually. Your standard safety features in here you've got airbags, EBD, ABS, and all your ISOFIX mounting points for your children's car seats in the back. It's quite a little fun drive, I might add. The car is quite gutsy with um, 63 kilowatts of power. It gets going and it's not really a struggle, but you need to use the gears. The problem is with the twin turbo, uh, with the twin air turbo, you need to work the gears because the moment the RPM drops, you're not getting enough boost from the turbo. So the car does tend to lag quite a bit. But if you're shifting gears quite frequently, especially on the downshifts and the corners, you need, the, need an extra power from a lower gear. Uh, so if you're quite a, an interactive driver, it's quite a nice driver's car for you. Visibility in here is great, you've got a nice little round window out the back behind you there in your blind spot to give you better visibility. Uh, generous side mirrors as well as clear um, view out the back rear view mirror. Uh, none of your fancy things like PDC or um, rear view park cameras, so just quite a standard straightforward um, uh, model. Pricing in the Fiat Panda Easy starts at 184900 going up to the lounge at just under 200,000 with the 4x4 variant at 230,000 and in the 4x4 Cross which we're driving here today with the all-wheel drive at just under 250,000 Rand. Quite competitive in the market especially with the likes of the Suzuki Jimny which is probably the closest off-road 4x4 competitor in the compact SUV segment. You're also looking at cars like your Renault Sandero, maybe your Toyota, uh, your, maybe your VW uh, up cross as well as uh, the Suzuki Ignis but it doesn't have the 4x4 capability like this and um, those cars are compact um, little SUVs with similar ground clearances this however having the nice off-road capability with its locking center and locking rear differentials giving you that extra off-road capability for your weekend warrior little urban jungle uh, off-roader and that's it for me for Sebastian at Dutchman Seb Catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. Until next time.